Hello viewers, today we are going to talk about traditional textiles of India, particularly Paithani, Chanderi and Maheshwari. Let us know more about Paithani. Maharashtra is known for its rich and exquisite traditional handloom textiles. Paithani is the most prized handwoven textiles in a bride's trousseau. Paithani handlooms were in existence since 2000 years. The same patterns are woven nowadays with the same techniques. And these are considered as prized heirlooms by many women. New techniques and products were introduced by different dynasties which ruled the state from time to time. All of these techniques have left an indelible impression on the history of handwoven textiles and handcrafted arts of Maharashtra. Paitani fabric history can be traced to Pulakesan II, the king of Chalukya kingdom. Paithan was their headquarters, which was known for its opulence and busy trading. The same is depicted in cave number no. 2 of Ajanta Caves. The characteristic saris of Paithan, such as Gangavarni brocades, the Bora Jali brocades, with delicate embroidery work, were very popular throughout the country. Malaganti, which is a textured cloth, which is very fine, was also popular throughout Yadava's empire. Silks were manufactured on a large scale and silk saris from Paithan were in great demand. Even under the Nizam's rule, Paithani enjoyed royal patronage. Nilofar, Nizam's daughter-in-law, is said to have introduced new motives and designs to the border and pallu. Although Literature also testifies that uh, the last patrons for Paithan were the Peshwa rulers. Men during that time wore stoles over their dhotis and kurtas, while the women wore Paithanis for weddings, festivals and religious ceremonies. The Peshwa records are a full references to these uh, Paithani handlooms, saris. Uh, this golden brocade in particular and Paithani patterns like Rumal, Shela, Dupatta, Tivate, Batti, Dhoti and Khana, which is a blouse material, were very popular. Women of noble families uh, during those days used Shela as a top cover. Shela is a long scarf uh, made out of silk with intricate embroidery work. This particular cloth can be used by both sexes to cover the upper torso. Sometimes instead of shela, a dupatta or a small scarf of matching color is used by the women to cover the upper body. So, Paitani manufacturing consisted of uh, manufacturing shela, dupatta and the Paitani itself. The texture of Paitani also attracted many men. A mini variety of uh, Paitani known as Pitambar was produced and the Paitani brocade patterns were introduced into it. The Pitambar is also known as Mukta. The weavers of Paitani Sari are mainly located in Paitan and Yola of Aurangabad and Nashik districts. Now, let us see the production of Paitani. The raw material that is required for producing Paitani includes silk yarn, especially mulberry silk yarn. This mulberry silk yarn is sourced from either Bangalore or Surat. Uh, to these manufacturing centers, which is Paithan and Yola. These centers are concentrated in specializing in silk saris. In warp, 20 to 22 denier silk is used, whereas in weft, 30 to 32 denier silk is used. On an average, a Paithani sari has 200 to 350 grams of silk and a completed sari weighs between 800 to 900 grams. The weaving is done by men while the women help in odd jobs. Now let us have a look at the colors that are used for uh, weaving the Spaithani saris. The colors are purchased from Mumbai by the dyers. There are about five to six families which are engaged in uh, dyeing at Yola. Now let us have a look at the zari that is used for making Paithani. Zari is used mainly in weaving the beautiful borders of Paithani saris. This zari is produced from Surat of Gujarat. Coming to technique 
of Paithani weaving. There are different stages of uh, Paithani weaving which are interdependent. They are sorting, reeling and spinning, bleaching, dyeing and sizing, gold and silver wiring and threading and designing. Designing is the most important aspect of uh, any weaving. The design inspirations for Paithani were from the different flora and fauna found in and around Paithan and also various scenes depicted from Ajanta and other paintings in Ajanta caves were the sources of design inspiration. The scenes that were based on religious themes generally connected with the worship of Krishna were also incorporated into the fabric. Besides the motifs such as flowers, animals, birds and mythological figures were also incorporated into the body of the fabric. The patti or the leaf motif was very popular throughout the country. The Paithani weavers were very famous for a unique motif called as Asavali motif. This particular design helped to make the brocade really very attractive. But it is most time consuming and a very intricate design which requires a lot of time. It also requires skill and patience on part of the weaver. The speciality of Paithani weavers lies in their extra weft designs which are created by using separate bamboo spindles. Every color uh, is wound onto a spindle that's called as a pern. And no technical aids like nakash or talim technique were used to make these intricate designs. Paithani weaving undoubtedly takes up a lot of time and hardly about 5 to 6 centimeters per day can be woven by a weaver. If a weaver continuously sits for 9 hours a day with a simple booty design, it takes him at least 75 days to complete the fabric. If the design is of intricate nature, like you know incorporating peacocks or parrots or any mythological figures, then it takes months to complete one sari. In the early 18th century, the cost of the Paithanis ranged between 30 rupees to 200. But at present, the cost is in the range of 3000 to 50,000. Now, let us see the uniqueness of Paithani saris. Paithani saris is world famous and has a very unique uh, property rather. And uh, Paithani saris are a must in every Maharashtran bride's trousseau. It is a handwoven uh, silk sari with a rich ornamental zari, pallu and a border. A special feature is that no mechanical means like the jacquard or the jala are used to make these intricate designs on the fabric. Skilled weavers count these threads of warp for every part of the design. By using tiny spindles or cloth perns or tillis, which is the local term, the weft is interlocked into the silk or the gold yarn onto the weft. Even a two and a half inch border might need 15 to 20 separate tillis depending upon the nature of the design. The speciality of Paithani is its border and its pallu. The whole pallu of an intricate design may require as many as 400 tillis. Making these beautiful motifs is known as extra weft technique. Let us have a look at the motifs that are very popular in Paithani saris. Because of its close proximity to Ajanta caves, the influence of Buddhist paintings can be clearly seen in these Paithani motifs. The traditional Paithani used to be a plain sari with a heavy zari border and ornamental pallu. The modern day designs include stars, circles and peacocks, flowers and paisley motifs. The Paithani borders and pallus are heavily adorned with these motifs and the sari is given the name after the design that's there on it, like Tota Maina, referring to parrot, Bangdi Moor referring to peacock with round design, Asavali referring to flower and wine, Narli meaning coconut. In the olden days, the zari used in making Paithanis was drawn from pure gold, but nowadays, Silver is substituted for gold, thus reducing the cost of the Paithani saris and making it more affordable to common people. 
the booties that are there in a paithani sari are um, woven by the weaver using an extra weft technique like we discussed earlier these booties are made by using tillies or uh, bamboo spindles the most commonly used booties in the body include kamal or the lotus flower hans or the swan ashrafi or paisa the coin asawali the flowering vine bangdi mor peacock in a bangle ruy phool as in cotton flower circle stars and a cluster of leaves tara as in star mor as in peacock poppet as in parrot kairi as in mango pankha as in fan kalas patli as in petal kamal as in lotus chandrakor as in moon narli as in coconut many of these innovative motifs and designs are found on the border and pallu in various sizes and patterns coming to pallu and border motifs in the days of uh, peshwas the borders and pallu were made with pure gold mixed with copper to give it more strength the proportion used then was 1 kg of gold to 1 tola of copper this combination was spun into a fine wire called as a zari but nowadays zari made of silver but coated with gold is used the borders are created with interlocking weft technique either with colored silk or zari in the border woven with a zari ground colored silk patterns are added as supplementary weft inlay against the zari usually in the form of a flower or a creeping vine two types of borders are commonly seen like the narali and the pankhi even if a very good weaver has woven the main body a master weaver is required for uh, the more intricate uh, parts of the sari like the border or the pallu the paithani sari is characterized by borders of an oblique square design and a pallu with a peacock design the design framework is linear as in straight and exquisite enameled floral birds especially the peacocks and parrots are woven in gold in the pallu and the border the back and the face of the sari are very similar as it is woven in tapestry method the zari used in the sari is on silk thread with twisted silver coated with gold sometimes cotton thread with twisted zari is used some of the common motifs found in the pallu of the sari are asawali panja muthda and more now let us look at the colors that are commonly seen in this paithani sarees a variety of colors um, is commonly seen the very delicate colors of paithani silk sarees give it a very unique touch and uh, these colors can either be pure or be created using a blend of different colored yarns the typical colors that are used in these sarees are kali chandra kala referring to black uddani referring to lighter black pofli you uh, referring to yellow neeli gungi referring to blue pasila a combination of green red and pink feroz a blend of green white and red sampras a mixture of green and red kusumbi a purple and red combination let us have a look at different uh, types of paithanis that are uh, available basically these paithanis can be classified by three criteria namely motifs weaving and colors classification of paithanis by motifs would include three varieties bangdi mor munia brocade and uh, lotus brocade a bangdi mor bangdi means bangle and mor means peacock so bangdi mor means a peacock in a bangle or in a bangle shape this motif is commonly seen on pallu and the design sometimes have has a single peacock which is dancing the sarees with this particular motif are very expensive because of the type of design the second category was uh, munia brocade the word munia means parrot 
Parrots are seen on the palu as well as on the border. These parrots are always uh, in leafy green color. The parrots in silk are called as uh, Tota Maina. The third category was lotus brocade. Here lotus motifs are used in palu and sometimes you can see lotus motifs on border too. One single lotus motif is ma made with uh, 7 to 8 colors. Let us try and classify Pythanis in terms of weaving. You have a cardial bordered sari. The word cardial means interlocking. The warp and the weft of the border are of the same color, while the body has different colors for both the warp and the weft. Kad or ek dhoti, a single shuttle is used for weaving of weft. The color of the warp yarn is different from that of the weft yarn and it has a narali border and a simple booty like paisa. Kad is also a form of lungi and it is used by the male Maharashtrians. Let us classify Pythanis in terms of color. You have Kali Chandra color which is a pure black sari in with red border. Raghu which is a parrot green colored sari. Shirodak which is a pure white sari. So these were the different types of Pythani that are commonly seen in the market. The most commonly used motifs in Pythani saris are Asavali like we had seen earlier, Akruti referring to walnut, Asrafi referring to a gold coin, Mor Bagdi referring to four peacocks and a bangle, Tota Maina referring to parrot nightingale, Ajanta referring to lotus, Bahisti Parinda referring to a bird motif, Huma Parinda, Ajanta Bale, Anar Bale, Draksh Bale, Gokar Bale, Jhad referring to a tree, Kairi referring to a mango motif. You can also see sometimes Buddha motifs and Mahavir motifs on Pythani saris. For the borders, different kinds of motifs are used like Motichur, Narlikant, and Kavle Katha. Now, let us look at the next segment which is Chanderi. Chanderi is a town in Ashoknagar district of Madhya Pradesh. It is famous for its hand woven saris. These saris are made with a uh, mix of silk and cotton. In the beginning, however, hand spun cotton warps and wefts were used for making Chanderi. The quality of yarn used was very fine, as fine as 300 count co uh, quality uh, yarn was used. But after the industrial revolution in the 1930s, Chanderi weavers discovered Japanese silk, which was substituted for the cotton warps. The Chanderi fabrics are exquisite and they are known for their sheer texture and uh, lightweight uh, property and also a glossy transparency property. The transparency of Chanderi fabrics is attributed to the use of non degummed silk yarn, which means the silk yarn is not degummed or um, the gum is not removed out of the silk yarn. Geographic indication status is given for Chanderi saris. It has been protected by government of India through a GI. GI is basically a sign that is used on products that are specific to a certain uh, geographical location. And these have certain qualities because of which they cannot be reproduced elsewhere in any part of India or the world. As a WTO member country, India also passed a geographical indication of Boots Act in 1999, which enables the registration and better protection of GIs relating to products. India has petitioned the World Trade Organization for recognition of Chenderi as a GI product at the international level as well. Let us see how these chanderi fabrics are produced. The raw material that is used for producing chanderi is basically silk, which is purchased from the local yarn dealers or it could be purchased uh, from Karnataka. Cotton on the other hand is procured from Coimbatore and it is usually pre-dyed. Silk yarn is dyed as per the requirement or as per the design. 
the yarn is in the hang form and this silk yarn is uh, dyed locally after dyeing the hank yarn is loosened and it is wound onto reels or smaller perns. The weft yarn is usually wound onto perns or bobbins with the help of cherka and women usually do this activity. The warp yarns on the other hand are wound onto bobbins. The warp is made ready on a warping board. The loom is set up by passing the warp threads through the helts and through the reed as, as well. The new warp is joined to the old warp threads deftly with a weaver's knot. Setting the loom is a laborious process which might take as much as 3 to 4 days. The border and pallu design are set by the weaver using a graph paper design. The specific ends are tied to a vertical uh, harness called as jala. This process is called as jala tying. The figured effect is produced with the extra weft and the number of tillis used. Weaving is done in a traditional pit loom. The wrong side of the woven fabric faces up towards the weaver so that he can keep track of the design which is unfolding in front of him. The booties made on Chenderi include Ashrafi booty, which is the most popular one, quite often used only for royalty in the olden days. There are different types of chanderi available. Chanderis are made in pure silk which means the warp and weft is silk. Chanderi is also made in cotton wherein the warp is cotton of 120 count and weft is again of cotton of 200 count. The resultant fabric is a muslin fabric which is again very sheer and fine when compared with uh, Dhaka muslins. Chanderis are also made in silk and cotton combination. In such case, the warp is 13 or 15 denier silk, whereas weft is 100 or 120 count cotton yarn. Now, let us try and compare and see the differences between Chanderi and Varnasi brocades. Both of them are brocade fabrics, but Varnasi brocades are made in silk, whereas Chanderi fabrics can be made both in silk and cotton. Chanderi weavers use a 13 or 15 denier silk while the Varanasi weavers use 20 or 22 denier silk. The muslins that are produced in Chanderi are far finer when compared with uh, Dhaka muslins because of the uniqueness of the sizing material that is used in Chanderi muslins. Chanderi fabric is used for saris, dress materials, pagris, dupattas. Now, viewers, let us have a look at Maheshwari Saris too. Maheshwari is a city in Madhya Pradesh in uh, Khargaon district. This Maheshwari Sari is a cotton or a pure silk sari. Again, it is a brocaded sari woven with uh, zari. You can see a lot of uh, designs uh, in Maheshwari Sari as well. The Maheshwari cloth became popular by the efforts of Queen Ahilya Bai of Malwa. Under her rule, the weaver's art flourished and it specialized into the present day Maheshwari cloth. Initially, it was produced only in cotton. After 1950s, silk was used in the warp and slowly that became the norm. Maheshwari cloth is produced on a loom that uses a fly shuttle. Supplementary string heddles are used to make the designs of the buta. Dobby machines are used for border patterning. The borders are geometrical in with fine uh, chevron lines and diamonds. The naka or the string heddles are suspended from separate posts on the loom and they are stretched across the body of the fabric like a tennis net. A set of knots in front of the weaver lifts the proper pattern line in a sequence. Since it is a string that sags down from the center, the wooden hammer like hooks hanging from the above um, secure the shed open and they keep the shed clean too, under which the weft is inserted. The butta is put in by hand with the bobbins of thread or the perns 
and most often it is the zari that is used for weft weaving. Once the weft is inserted, the naka shed is released and a row of plain weave goes in between the rows of the butta work. The weavers work on the back of the cloth and always have the work covered by some cloth or other to protect it from dust and dirt. The classic Maheshwari is a silk or cotton uh, fabric with narrow zari border. The warp is fine silk yarn brought from Bangalore and Banaras. The weft is super fine cotton yarn brought from Coimbatore. Along with saris, dupattas and suit materials and plain cloth is also woven in uh, Maheshwari. This fine airy cloth is perfect for hot Indian summers and because of the silk content, the cloth floats above the skin giving it a very airy feel for a consumer. Maheshwari sarees have reversible border and this is one of the characteristic features of Maheshwari sarees. Because of its reversible borders, it can be used on both sides. One can also see stripes, checks and floral borders on Maheshwari sarees. The pallu, however, has distinctive five lines. After independence, the handloom industry in Maheshwar went into decline. Descendants of the Queen Ahilya Holkar revived the Maheshwari traditions and set up a society called as Reva. Reva supported the weavers in terms of designs, product development, skill development and training and marketing too. Apart from saris, stoles and dupattas are also produced by the Reva society. Let us look at some of the designs in uh, Maheshwari saris. It includes chatai, the mat pattern, chameli kaful inspired by chameli flower, int pattern inspired from a brick and hira inspired from a diamond. These motifs and designs have not lost their uh, prestigious place on the Maheshwari saris and they are still commonly used um, designs by the weavers. There are five different varieties of Maheshwari saris which include Chandrakala, Baigani Chandrakala, Chandratara, Beli and Parbi. The Chandrakala and Baigani Chandrakala are the plain kind but the Chandratara, Beli and Parbi fall under the striped or checked uh, pattern. So viewers, we have seen uh, so far about three important uh, textiles in India, the Paithani, the Chanderi and Maheshwari saris. Hope you were able to enjoy this lesson. Thank you.